working with linear equations with two variables. Um, the equation has a general format y equals mx plus b. Uh, m is known as the slope, b is known as the y-intercept. And we'll see in just a moment all that means. And by definition, the slope of a line, and by the way, a linear equation with two variables will be represented by a straight line on the uh, x-y uh, axis. And uh, the slope, by definition, is the rise over the run, the change in the y over the change in x. And again, we'll see in just a moment what all that means. But this is basically the whole thing, all what you need to know in order to solve a whole array of different kinds of problems that you're going to run into in algebra. So we're going to go through systematically to a certain, to a number of uh, different types of problems you'll run into, dealing with linear equations with two variables. And let's start with finding the slope given two points. All right, so points usually are indicated with an x and a y value. So if I have the points minus 2 comma 4 and another point 3 and minus 2. Well, first of all, let's graph those on the Cartesian coordinate system. So we have the vertical axis, which represents y, the horizontal axis, which represents x. Let's place those points on there. So this, let's say this is the first point, x1 and y1. This is the second point, x2 and y2. So these are the x and y coordinates of each of the two points. x being negative 2, that's to the left, 1, 2, and y being 4, that goes up, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. So this point right here where those two lines meet is the point negative 2, comma, 4. And the next point, x equals 3, 1, 2, 3, and y equals negative 2, 1, 2, where those two meet like here. That's the point 3, comma, negative 2. All right, so now we've found our two points on the Cartesian coordinate system. If we now draw a line connecting those two points, looks like that. And what we're now supposed to do is find the slope of that line. And you can see that when you go from the left to the right, the line drops, so the y value becomes less. That means there's a negative slope. So by definition, the slope just like we defined it over there, is equal to the rise over the run. That means how much does the height change? In this case, this case of course, the rise is a negative number because we actually drop in elevation. So the, the rise is negative over a certain amount of run in the x direction. So it's the change in the y value divided by the change in the x value. This little triangle here that means change. How much does the value in y change? And by definition, that is y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. So y2 is negative 2 minus y1, which is 4, divided by x2, which is 3, minus x1, which is a negative 2. So be careful. We have to put parentheses around that. Negative 2 like that. Working this out, we get Minus 2 minus 4 is minus 6, divided by 3 minus a minus 2. So if we subtract the negative number, it's like adding the positive number. So this is 3 plus 2, or 5. So the slope is minus 6 over 5. That means we drop 6 units as we move to the right 5 units. OK, let's do a couple more. Uh, I have a few more points right here. So what about the point 3 and 4? and negative 2, negative 2. Remember that these are the x values of the two points, and these are the y values of the two points. So finding the slope, by definition, is equal to the rise over the run, which is equal to the change in y over the change in x. Now you may wonder, why am I always writing this? I've already ri written all that before. Is not a waste of time? Not really. To really ingrain it into your, into your brain, it's a good idea to just keep writing the same thing over and over and over again. It's kind of like the old-fashioned way of learning things. And this is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And then it's a good idea to mark your points. So this is point 1, so this is x1, this is y1, this is x2, this is y2, and that way it's very difficult to make a mistake. So let's plug in the numbers. Y2 is negative, oh, right here, negative 2. See, a good thing that I, that I marked them. I almost picked the wrong number here, even though they're the same. 
it's, this is the number negative 2, is y2, um, minus y1, so minus 4, divided by x2, which is a minus 2, minus 3. Okay, so in this case we get negative 2, negative 4, which is a negative 6, divided by negative 2, negative 3, which is a minus 5, and the negatives cancel out, so I get 6 over 5, and here we have a positive slope. Okay, one more example. These aren't so bad. We have negative 2, comma, 3, and 4, comma, 1. Or let's make it negative 1. All right, so here's the third point. We're supposed to find the slope. By definition, the slope is equal to the rise over the run. So if you keep doing that every single time, it's like you do that without even thinking about it. Divided by, it's equal to the change in y over the change in x, which is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And now, of course, remember, um, you want to label your points. So this is point 1, that's point 2. This is your x1 and y1 of point 1. This is your x2, y2 of your point 2. Now go ahead and plug in the associated numbers. y2 is over here, that's a negative 1, minus y1 over here, which, which is a 3, divided by x2, which is 4, minus x1, which is a negative 2. Again, put in the parentheses, because when you subtract a negative number, that becomes positive. All right, working this out, you get minus 1, minus 3 is minus 4 divided by a 4, a minus a minus 2, that's the same as adding the positive number, so that's 4 plus 2, which is 6, or negative 2 thirds, so there's the slope between those two points.